Hello everyone and welcome to another Unity scripting tutorial. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you how you can create bullet collision using Raycast. And this is especially helpful for bullets that move, that travel really fast. So uh, first off, let's start by creating our bullet and we'll make a simple sphere to be our bullet. Uh, this is a bit too big, so let's make it a bit smaller so that the collision is harder to catch. There we go. And let's create a material for it to make it more visible. So we'll give it a bright green color. There we go. Okay. Next up, let's create our object that we want to collide with. So we'll make a cube. And this cube will be right over here. Um, also, let's rotate this sphere so that it's looking at the cube along its forward direction choose the z-axis and we will uh, try to make this bullet collide with this cube so first let's create our bullet script and in our bullet script we'll give it a public float of m speed that will start off at 10.0 f since our bullet will be traveling along its z-axis, we'll translate along this axis. So we will say transform dot translate 0.0f 0.0f and m speed times time dot delta time. Translate. There we go. So if we try to run it now. We didn't attach the bullet script to the bullet. There we go. And there we go. So it's traveling along the z-axis. And as you can see, it's hitting the cube. So we just need to catch this collision now using the colliders. So for the, for the bullet, we just need to set its trigger to true. So we can catch the trigger, the collision event. And in here, in void on trigger enter collider other we'll do a debug.log of our other.gameObject.name so it'll just tell us the name of the object that we just hit if we run it it still doesn't cause a collision because we need to attach a rigid body to one of our objects and usually you'll attach a rigid body to the object that has, well, there are less of that object. And if, since you have a lot of bullets on screen at a time, it's better to attach it to something like the enemy that you want to hit. We will remove use gravity so that it doesn't fall down. And we will run it again and see what happens. As, as you can see, it triggers right here. So what happens now if we make it faster? For example, let's make our speed 100. And there we go. It already doesn't trigger a collision. That's because in one frame, it's over here. The next frame, it's over there. And it skips over that cube. And this happens a lot, especially for bullets when, you're, when you have a gun and you're shooting uh, very fast bullets. Um, if you're doing something like a space shooter, this shouldn't be an issue, although uh, it could be if your bullets are too fast. Okay, so how would we go at fixing that and using Raycast to fix this issue? What we can do now is create a, is to check for a Raycast collision. So where will our Raycast be? Our Raycast will be starting from where our bullet is, this frame, to where it was in the last frame so that it draws a line between the two frames and it catches any collision that happened in between. How we do this is first we need to, to create an array so we'll, it will be arraycast hit array and this will be equal to physics dot raycast all. So raycast all takes array and the array that we want to create is from where we are in this frame to where we were in the frame before. Of course, we have to do this 
um, after the translation. So since we need to know where we were in the frame before, we need to keep a value of where we were in the frame before, which will be a vector 3, and we'll call this m previous position. So when we first start, our previous position will be our transform.position. And in our update, it will be still our transform.position as well. So at the beginning of each frame, the previous position will be our current position. And then we'll translate so our current position is going to change. And then we will have the difference between the two right here. Um, so our ray will be a new ray. The starting point for this ray will be our previous position. And the direction of the ray will be the transformed up position, our current position, minus the previous position dot normalized, which will give us a directional vector uh, from where we are now to, so this is the ending point where we are now minus the starting point. So it gives us, if we're moving along this value, it will give us a vector that's pointing from where we were to where we are. And finally, we will give it a distance. So this is our ray. And then for raycast all, we now just need to give it a distance. Um, and our distance will be the distance from the last frame to this frame. So we will say that we want the distance to be the transform dot position minus the previous position dot magnitude. And this will be it for our of course, this will be called hits. So these, this will, will uh, trigger all the hits along this raycast. So everything that we hit along this line should be inside this array. So let's go ahead and do a for loop to output all our hits. So it's going to be less than hits.length, i++. And we'll say debug.log our hits at i dot collider dot game object dot name so all this would do is tell us tell us uh, about all the objects that the name of all the objects that we hit using this raycast of course now we don't need our uh, trigger enter because we're not using it for our collision detection anymore so if we go here and where is our cube it's right here and we try to run this as you can see, it's causing a collision with the sphere. And since the sphere is, of course, our, our bullet, and since uh, we are using raycast collision now instead of our um, on trigger enter, we can remove the sphere collider from the bullet. So now that we have one less collider that we're checking in the scene, and if we run that, as you can see, it catches the cube every time. So if I don't clear it on play, and every run, it catches the cube collision. And the nice thing about this um, doing collision this way as well is that you don't need a rigid body to actually trigger the collision. So if I remove the rigid body here and try to run it, as you can see, it still triggers our collisions. So this is a pretty quick rundown of how raycasts work with bullets. Um, there is one more thing that I wanted to show you. It's debug dot draw line, and this line will be the starting vector will be our transform dot position, and the ending vector will be our previous position. Just so that you can see what the raycast looks like in each frame, and if I pause it, as you can see, it starts from where we uh, where we are right now, and it extends all the way back to where we were in the last frame. And this is our raycast that's catching every collision. So I really hope that this video helped you out. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below. Um, and I will see you in the next video.